Alright, so we just completed our first shot. We're going to need to make a second shot to uh, have something to edit together in the master sequence asset. So let's go ahead and save our first shot out. I'm going to go ahead and close this. And we're going to just right click, go to animation, level sequences, and we're just going to call this shot 2. Let's open that up. So right away you'll notice that there are no cameras, there are no actors, and if we press play, there's not even the idle animation playing on the mannequin which we assigned to him earlier. Now this is a perfect example of how uh, sequence assets are self-contained. So anything that you put into a um, sequence asset is going to stay in that sequence asset and it's not going to affect the game level. So this means that we have to create a new cinematic camera. So let's go ahead and do that. And it's going to, in our active uh, viewport here, throw us right into pilot mode. So in this scene, we're going to have our actor go from his idle animation into a walk cycle. So I'm going to frame him up uh, something maybe like this. And I'm going to leave him some, uh, some screen real estate here to, to move around. So I like where the camera is there. I'm going to go and I'm going to key that. Make sure my slider is at zero. I'm going to make sure that our mannequin here is in focus. Key that at zero. And the mannequin himself, we will add to the sequencer. And we're going to add the idle animation. So let's say we want him to idle on screen for about 20 frames or so. I'm going to add another keyframe here and then slide this uh, idle sequence past zero so that he starts the sequence already partway through his idle animation and it's going to end at 20 frames. I'm then going to click the animation button again and then select the walk sequence. So I'm thinking he's going to walk for another, let's say, 60 frames. So let's drag this out to 80. I'm going to uh, set a set of keyframes down at 80. And then I'm going to drag the walk cycle out to 80 to make sure that it repeats enough to cover that entire 80 frames. Next, I'm going to take his translation tool here. And I'm going to translate him forward and hit S again. And you will see his uh, path updates in, after you reset the keyframes to his new position. So let's play that out and see how that looks. That looks all right. Now you'll notice we have the problem that our actor is walking out of the frame as he goes along. So there's two ways that we can go about fixing this. The first is grabbing our camera, and we could set in keyframes on his rotation to make sure that he follows the actor as he goes. And that wouldn't be too hard of a fix for this particular sequence, but if we had a more complex movement, we're going to want a, uh, a simpler way of, of going about this. So what we're going to do instead is we're going to go back to the first frame of our animation by hitting to front. We're going to come down here and enable look at tracking. And then we're going to pick the, the dropper and select the mannequin. So you'll notice the camera has snapped to the mannequin. And as we play out the animation here, the camera is going to follow him wherever he goes. And we don't have to add any translation at all. It does it by itself. The real problem here is the look at tracking function points the camera toward the actor's pivot, which for this particular mannequin is his feet. So that means our camera is looking at the mannequin's feet rather than at his face, which is what we really want. So in order to fix this, we click the camera, we come down here to relative offset, and we're just going to adjust the Z here until it's something that we want. Whoops. 
This looks pretty good here. I'm just going to round this off to 90 and we'll go with that. So now we have a camera following our actor as he goes along plus this relative offset keeps him framed the entire time. Now in order for this to stick while you're editing it you're gonna have to add a custom track to your camera here. So come down here to your named actor camera click the plus track the look at tracking settings is at the bottom. Look at actor to track. So we're just going to go to the very uh, first frame here. And here is our new track that we added. And we're just going to make sure that there's a keyframe here. And uh, this will ensure that while we play this back, and no matter in what function we play this back, that it's us uh, locked onto this actor specifically. We're uh, uh, then going to go back to the uh, the camera and add a second track to key our relative offset because we want to make sure that our uh, animation remembers that we need this 90 uh, relative offset. So again we're going to go back to the front we're just going to hit the new button on relative offset so that it sets a, a keyframe here on all of our values and that's how you keep a uh, looked at camera behaving properly when we go to edit it. From here we can jump right into the uh, the master asset and start mixing our shots together into a longer more complete uh, sequence.